Watch you guys, today we're taking a look at the brand new Acer Tor Locker Store for Gen 3. This is the AS6804T, and this is probably the perfect network attached storage unit you could purchase if you're a home user or even a small business or enterprise level, because this is an exceptionally good uh, unit. As you can see, it comes very well packaged with, with this very thick foam here to protect the actual unit. As you'd expect, this is quite an expensive product so it needs to be protected during transport so this is exactly what you're going to get inside the kit on this particular model you're going to get the actual nas itself your quick start guide your power cable here yours will be different depending on what country you're in there's a bunch of uh, screws here these are for the drives because this is not a toolless uh, design you will have to screw the drives into position as well and we also have the power brick here this is the actual power unit to power the NAS itself and you can see the details there on the screen this is actually a very quiet cool running particular device compared to some of them that I've uh, uh, tested over the last few months so this is a kettle lead what we call a kettle lead in the UK so these are easily pick up if this got lost or broken you can easily replace it you've got your quick start guide here with the QR codes on here which allows you to set this up on your phone or even on a PC, which I'll do a little bit later. You can even use the on-screen menu display as well. You've got four Ethernet cables on here as well, because we have four Ethernet ports on here, which we'll go through a little bit later in this video. So that's everything you're going to get inside the box. What we're going to do is take a look at some of the specifications. Now, you can see we do have an AMD Ryzen V3C14, and this is a quad-core processor, uh, which is going to be running at 2.3 gigahertz with a turbo boost of up to 3.8 gigahertz. It comes with 16 gigabytes of server grade DDR5 4800 ECC memory with a maximum of upgrading to 64 gigabytes. We also have quad M.2 slots on here, which is your NVMe SSD double performance with PCI Express 4.0. And I'll show you those a little bit later on. So let's take a look at the actual unit itself. We have some control and navigation buttons here on the top right hand side and we also have that LCD display here as well. On the other side we have some LED lights here and a power button to power on the actual unit. We have some LED lights just below that and also a USB port on the front. On here we have four bays which support 3.5 inch SATA hard drives and 2.5 inch SATA hard drives as well or even 2.5 inch SATA SSD drives. You can also purchase an expansion unit, so giving it up to 16 bays. You can see here they do different models here. This is the four bay version, but they also do this one here, which is a six bay version as well. And they also have even larger ones here if you're interested in these, if you need more space. Again, these can also accept uh, expansion units as well, which would give you obviously tons of storage. So let's take a look at the larger one here, which is a 10 bay NAS. And this can also have expansion units added to it as well, which would extend the amount of storage that you could use on this device. So let's go back to our little unit here, which is a four bay version. This is also lockable. You can lock these at the bottom, as you can see here. To gain easy access to these, they do have a little button on the bottom, which you can push, which will allow you to gain access to the actual tray gain access to the hard drive bay here. So let me go ahead and pop this open. I'll pull it back a little bit so you can see. You just pop this little button here and you can see the little locks on the bottom here. And this will allow you to gain access to the actual caddy where you can put the drive into. Now it comes with its own screws. So if you wanted to put your drives in here, it's quite simple and easy to do. You just put four screws in to hold the drive in place. These are made of metal as well. The whole unit is made of metal as well. So it's not plastic which means it's got very good build quality. You can see some ventilation down there to keep the drives nice and cool. And you can mount 2.5 inch and three and a half inch drives inside here, as well as two and a half inch SSDs will be supported on here as well. So you just mount these with the screw holes here. Now also these do support hot swappable, so we can hot swap these drives. I always recommend that you shut down the unit itself properly before hot swapping any sort of drive rather than just pulling the drive out that's just my way of doing things. So let's go ahead and put this uh, drive back into its bay. And I will populate these with a couple of drives a little bit later on. But on the front there as well, we do have a, a Type-A USB port. 
and that is a USB 3.2 Gen 2, which supports up to 10 Gbps uh, speeds on there, which is very nice to have. We've got some LED lights on the front here for activity as well. Let's move on to around the back here. On the back, we do have an expansion port here, which will allow you to go up to a 10 GBE uh, card in here if you wanted to. We do have two USB 4 ports on here as well. And these support speeds up to 40 Gbps, which is a Type-C port as well. And you also have that reset button there as well, right above the type C ports there. Again, you've got two more USB ports on here. These are another uh, USB Type-A ports. They're USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, 10 Gbps as well. And again, we've got four Ethernet ports here. There's two five gigabit Ethernet ports, and we also have two 10 gigabit Ethernet ports as well. And remember, you can also add more Ethernet ports onto this device as well with the expansion card as well. And also you can use uh, your Type-C ports here as well. Down the bottom here, we do have our Kenston lock. Now, we've got a 120 millimeter fan on here as well to keep the unit nice and cool. The power consumption for this is 34 watts operational mode. And we also have 23 watts when it's in sleep mode. The noise levels for that uh, actual fan would be 17.6 decibels when the hard drives are idle and i found it very very quiet indeed compared to some of the other NASes that i've tested in the past as you can see it's an absolute beast now when we remove the free back screws it gains access to inside which has four more m.2 slots here for nvme drives as well which is even more storage it's an absolute beast it really is so plenty of expansion for this particular device that you can add to here it's made of metal as you can see here very well built and again this top cover is made of metal and it's easy to slide off once you remove the free screws and you can see here there is a card in here already populated but you can also like i said there is an expansion slot on here as well which will allow you to put another expansion card in the back which i showed you a little bit earlier so all in all a very well built uh, unit also comes with a three year warranty on here. Now the memory installed on here is 16 gigabytes and that's pre-installed on the actual unit itself. But like I said, we can actually upgrade this as well up to a maximum of 64 gigabytes of memory. So I'll quickly show you there is an expansion slot around here, which you can populate. It's just behind this plastic cover here. You pull this back and there is another memory module right here, which you can populate. So all in all, I really do like the design of this. Let me just quickly show you how we can set this up. It's super easy. Put your drives in. Once you've got your drives in, we're going to put some power to it and we're going to go through and I'll quickly show you how to set this up. It's super easy and it does have a lot of uh, applications that you can install on this, whether you want to make this a Plex server or, you know, backup or whatever it is you want to use it for. You can use it for multiple things. When we power it on, you can see it does have an on-screen display here and you can see the system is starting to uh, start up here. So we just need to wait and you can control that from these on-screen buttons here. And I'll quickly uh, do this, but we can also do it uh, from the computer as well or from your phone. So you can see starting system, please wait. So it tells you exactly what it's going to be doing right here. And you can see the LED lights on the drive bays. I'm only populated two of them for this video, but again, you can populate these with large drives and give you plenty of storage to start out with. And you can see there's a, a solid light on the actual drive bay and there will be an activity light next to it as well once it starts sending data there as well. So what we're going to do next is also take a look at the supported operating systems for this particular NAS while this initiates. It supports Windows 10, Windows 11, Server 2016, Server 2019 and Server 2022. Mac OS is also supported, Unix, Linux and BSD is also supported as well. Supported languages, you can check their website. There's quite a few different ones there. And supported browsers are Firefox, Chrome, Safari and Microsoft Edge. So there's loads and loads of information on their website. You can uh, have a look at it. I'll leave a link for that in the video description so you can check it all out rather than me read it all out to you. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over to the computer and we will install the software so we can configure this and get this up and running. And I'll show you what it looks like once we got it set up. Now I'm going to head over to Acer Store uh, website here. And what we're going to do is go to the download section and we need to select the model 
uh, of this particular unit here so we can download the software. So to go ahead, you can either do a search for it by doing a search for the actual model number and it will be on the box so you will be able to find it. But I know exactly which one it is. It's one of these uh, Locker Store uh, 4 and this is the Gen 3 version and that's the one we're going to be going for here which is the AS6804T. But you can see, which I showed you earlier on in the video, there is a 10 bay version here as well, which is an absolute beast. It really is. And this will have plenty of drive bays on here for all of your storage. So I'm going to quickly select our one here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the downloads page here. Now, what we're interested in here is the actual control center. That's what we need to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and download the control center, which is this ACC uh, control center for Windows and we're going to go ahead and download that bit of software and get it installed on here. Very simple. If you've never set one of these up before, it's not that difficult. Uh, but once you get it configured, you can do some amazing things with it. So let's go ahead and get this installed on our PC. And again, this also, like I said, works with Mac OS, also Linux as well. So we're going to go ahead and quickly install the software. And you may see a little pop up box popping up here. This is OK. We're just going to say install here. This is so it can recognize the actual NAS on the network. So I'm going to go ahead and say always trust that and click finish. And then what will happen is the software will open and it will do a scan on your computer. And you can see it's already detected our NAS right here. And you've got a scan button here. We've got open connect. Also ADM update services and action buttons on the here. You can have a look at this a little bit later on. I've blurred out the serial number and the MAC address here. But all you need to do here, you can see it says uninitialized. We need to get it initialized so it will be recognized on the network so we can start to uh, prepare the drives and get everything set up. So let's go ahead and do that right here. I'm not worried about all this stuff right now. Just going to go ahead and initialize it by clicking on uninitialized. And this will then start the process by wiping the drives and get it ready to uh, put the operating system on there. Once you click on uninitialized, it will start to take you to this page here, which is your IP address, which you see on the actual network attached storage earlier on the on-screen display. And all you need to do here is go through the motions here. We're just gonna do the recommended, let it go off and do a live update here. And uh, again, obviously it needs to be attached to the network and obviously connected to the internet so it can do this otherwise it's not going to work because this is what this is a network attached storage so let's go ahead and let that do its thing and it's going to update the system and restart the system you'll hear a few beeps and it will restart accept their terms conditions and now you can select the appearance whether you want it in light or dark mode here i'm going to leave it on light mode so you can just see what we're doing here but we're going to have a one click setup but they have a custom setup which is for more advanced users I'm going to keep it to the one-click setup to make it easier for you to understand how quick and easy it is to get one of these up and running. This will take care of all the hard work for us. You can see here we've got the name of the server, so you can name it whatever you like. I'm going to leave it as is. We've got an option here for balanced and maximum capacity. I'm going to leave it on balanced here. And uh, we can take support snapshots, backups, and stuff like that. We can take care of a lot of this stuff later on. But I've only got small drives in here as an example here. But you're going to need to give yourself an account name. And also we're going to need to give this a password. So let me go ahead and give it account name. I'm just going to call this, say, admin here. And what we'll do is we'll give it a password. Now, this needs to be a pretty strong password because you want to make it uh, pretty strong. We're using uppercase, lowercase, and also uh, numbers as well to make sure it's very difficult for them to crack it if they were trying to gain access. So let me go ahead and accept their conditions here. And what we're going to do is click start initialization. It doesn't like the word admin. So let me go ahead and change this because admin is quite a common word. So they probably don't want you using something so generic like that. So let's just put say 101 on the end here and that should be good enough. Click start and this will start the initialization off. And again, it's going to prepare the drive partitions and uh, the system volume and data volume. It's going to do all this for you and take care of it. So this is probably the one click setup, which is going to be more easier for people that are not familiar with a network attached storage. So we're just going to let that load up. And there you can see you can now register your NAS right here. So I am going to skip this part and register later. You can always register 
at a later date if you want to. So don't worry about that. I'm going to skip this part for now. And we're going to move on. And it says now, thank you for using your Acer Tor. Uh, so let's go ahead and choose the English language here. And again, we're just going to quickly continue here. And this is the actual desktop here. And I do actually like this. So you can see there's some information here. You can read through all this when you're setting yours up. But again, I'm just going to say I agree and click OK here. So let's take a look at what it looks like. So you can see here we do have quite a lot of stuff here. We have our settings panel. And as you would imagine, there's a lot of settings in here for like your general network, regional options, hardware, notifications and all that sort of good stuff right here. This is where obviously you'd be setting up your local users, your local groups and all that good stuff and your shared folders that you want to set up here. I'm not going to be doing that in this video. If you want to see a more in-depth video on that sort of stuff, then let me know in the comment section down below. And I'll be happy to make a, a full in-depth video on how to set this up from start to finish, i.e. get the users and also shared folders. You can see a picture there of the drives that we have populated. We only have two inside here because obviously this is a tutorial. But again, you can see it's setting up our RAID and also it tells us what volumes we've got here and our drives. And it will tell you the drive's health and stuff like that once it's finished its synchronization. So again, we do have also our app center here. This is where you're going to be installing all your apps. Another thing that people get confused with is it's not designated to just one particular type of app. If you're thinking that if I use this as a Plex server, I can't use it for anything else. That's not true. You can use it for many different things uh, like uh, CCTV uh, surveillance and you can have it set up as your Plex server and you can have it set up as something else as well. So there's quite a few things you can set this up for. So this is under the recommended section here. You can see Plex Media Server, Docker Engine and also Portainer, which is nice. Next Cloud and we also have a Jellyfin on here and there's a bunch of other stuff. So let's go ahead and go for the latest apps and you can see there's quite a few latest apps here. I'm not going to go through them all, but there is apps here for just about everything you need to do on your computer and on your network. Whether that would be uh, displaying all your photos or backing all your phone up or backing your computer up. We have Home Assistant here for all your Home Assistant needs as well. You can set that up on here as well. But you can see there is everything you're going to need, whether you want a mail server, whether you want to host your own web page on here. There is just about everything. You can see under the category section, we've got backup and sync. We've got blogs. We've got bulletin boards. We've got e-learning, e-commerce, download, and loads of other stuff here, multimedia. You can choose the sections or categories that you want here, and you can set it up as well. So loads and loads of stuff on here. If you want to see some of this stuff, then let me know in the comment section down below and I'll be happy to make those videos for you. You may be wondering how much does all this cost? Well, a network attached storage is not cheap. And again, for something of this specification, you're looking at paying $1,299. That is without your drives. So you would need to populate this with your own drives. And of course, that would also bump the price up. They're never cheap setting one of these up, but once you've got them set up, they will last you for many, many years. You can upgrade as you go. You don't have to set this up all in one go and spend an absolute fortune. You can upgrade to add drives to it as you need them in the future. But again, it's probably one of the best network attached storages out there on the market today, and it's a pretty powerful machine. And for full transparency, before the trolls hit the comments section saying this is a sponsored ad, this is not a sponsored uh, video. This is an actual review where the sample was sent to me by Asus Door. All the opinions are my own. No one is reviewing this video before it's released. So anyway, with that said, I think that is going to be about it. If you're looking for one of the best uh, network attached storages on the market today, uh, then check out uh, their website. There is loads of information on there. I'll leave all the links and information in the video description. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. Whether you're tier one, tier two or tier three, I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.